In the last few years, the Jacksonville Jaguars were the absolute laughingstock of the league. But 2021 really took the cake for them because when you had a college head coach in Urban Meyer, he didn't really take the transition very well. In his first and only year, a lot of on-field and off-field scandals throughout, throughout his one and only year and was fired shortly before the season ended. And when you looked at that week 18 game at the Indianapolis Colts, sure they won, but yeah, and their entire fan base dressed up in clown suits in the land of AEW. But at least for the all elite Jaguars, they rectified that mistake by hiring a former Super Bowl winning head coach in Doug Peterson. Was it going to be enough to um was it going to be enough to lead them away from Clownsville? I don't know. It was from A to B seen in 2022. They weren't expected to compete for anything uh, meaningful this past season, at least in my eyes and many others. But the most important thing for Jacksonville th this coming th that coming season was how their first overall pick from 2021, Trevor Lawrence, their quarterback, would perform in year two under this new head coach. And at least fortunately for the Jaguars, the newly coached uh, Jacksonville team showed some promise, especially Trevor Lawrence. He showed more strides, making smarter decisions, um, and passing each week. And he looked like a better quarterback under uh, Doug Peterson. So for the Jags, they started out 2-1. and one. But then after that, even though Trevor Lawrence showed improvement, the rest of his team kind of left a lot to be desired. Um, they proceeded to lose their next six to seven games, mainly because the rushing and the receiving game, pretty much Trevor Lawrence's supporting cast, didn't do a whole lot to create big play opportunities or find open areas of space to make those opportunities happen. And defensively, they were bad against even the most inconsistent of quarterbacks like Matt Ryan, Daniel Jones, and even a bad Russell Wilson-led Denver offense. They couldn't pressure them either. So by the time they get to their bye week, they were three and seven. They seem destined to be those same old all elite Jaguars that we known them before. But then they began to pick it up with dominant wins over, of course, bad teams, because that's what a seemingly good team does on a good run. But then they also got some quality wins, um, including one against the Baltimore Ravens, which jump started their their good second half run. And then even the Dallas Cowboys, um, they went six, six and one in the final stretch of the season. And by the time they got to the end of the regular season, they were they were keeping pace with the Tennessee Titans um, in the AFC South division race. So the Titans were facing injury woes uh, late in the season, but the Jaguars had an opportunity to win the division in a week 18 game against a Ryan Tannehill Titans. Yeah, they had a lot of difficulty um, moving the ball due to Tennessee's defense, but they got some luck and claimed their fame to the AFC South title and got a playoff game against the Chargers at home. But, you know, they faced some difficulty um, very early on and very frequently. They fell into a rapid 27-0 hole um, because Trevor Lawrence threw four interceptions and there were a lot of miscues on special teams, but they managed to call their way back. We all remember that uh, big comeback or in this case of the Clippers, that big choke by them. Um, and Trevor Lawrence pretty much pulled out the reverse Uno card, threw for four touchdowns. Jaguars outscored the, the Clippers in the second half, and they moved on to the divisional game against the Kansas City Chiefs. But unfortunately for the Jaguars, they struggled to contain a Chiefs team that even though they didn't have Patrick Mahomes uh, to an, er, early on in the game to an ankle injury, and when he came back, the Jaguars still couldn't find a way to take them down, especially when Mahomes was just in the pocket, frequently finding so many different guys that's not named Travis Kelsey. And the Jags fell to the eventual Super Bowl champions. So overall, you know, even though the Jags couldn't pull off an upset in the divisional game, they had themselves a su successful season. Trevor Lawrence, in his second year, greatly benefited from first-year head coach Doug Peterson um, they got some nice flashes from the rookies, Trayvon Walker and linebacker Devin Lloyd, um, their, their first-round rookies. And I think both of them could be great assets uh, going into year two alongside veteran Josh Allen, the linebacker, not the Bills quarterback. Um, and then late in the season, 
even though the defensive play was so-so, uh, the supporting cast around Trevor Lawrence, you know, they were playing much better. Uh, Travis Etienne, the running back, tight end Evan Ingram, and receiver Jamal Agnew all played very well. They stepped up finally for Trevor Lawrence. So overall, the Jaguars had a successful 19 season, won the AFC South, and, you know, going as the offseason's going on, even though they're not really doing much in free agency, not sure why, you know, they're looking to build on that success. Maybe do more than just repeat as division champions, especially considering how weak the AFC South is right now. So looking at some of their moves right now, um, obviously they got Calvin Ridley back, their, their receiver that they traded for last year. Um, he got reinstated by the NFL after serving a year-long suspension for gambling on Falcons games when he was a member of the Atlanta Falcons during the 2021 season. So having Kevin, Calvin Ridley back is going to be a huge benefit tr- for Trevor Lawrence. Um, he, he'll he probably be the number one receiver in that offense um, alongside Jamal Agnew. But they did lose right tackle Jawan Taylor to the Chiefs um, and defensive end Arden Key to the Titans to multi-year deals. So they're going to have to find replacements for that. Um, they franchise tag Evan Ingram, but they are l- working on a long-term deal. Um, they also re-signed uh, safety Andrew Wingard. So a good part of that defense. Uh, so some of the things that they still have to address. Um, so look, it seems like they're focusing more on the draft um, and building from there. Um, I think they do have to focus focus on upgrading most of that defense um their defense you know had its key moments last year um to get the jaguars into the playoffs but like i said it still needs some improvement in most areas um they still need to find some uh, at least two corners in the upcoming draft hope they pan out um uh, to be day one starters maybe that's when they at least use one first round pick on one of them um they could also use some help on the interior pass rush because they had some difficulty getting to the quarterback get some inside pressure in there and they may be retold the offensive line. Like I said, you lost Jawan Taylor um, in free agency, so you got to find a replacement for him. And maybe beef up the interior offensive line to help out uh, guard Brandon Sheriff and center Tyler Shantley. So, yeah, get some help within uh, the offensive line and upgrade most of your defense. So overall for the Jaguars, you know, a little nice turnaround from their all-elite disaster from 2021. And... Yeah, you were division champions in 2022. Now, can you manage to build on that in 2023? That remains to be seen. But it seems like, at least for now, Shahid Khan, the owner, and Trent Balky, the the general manager, made the right choice in hiring Doug Peterson uh, a year ago. Now, again, it's a little weird that they're not really doing anything in free, in free agency, but... If they can nail those draft picks, and you know Trent Bulky hasn't had exactly had a great history with draft picks, but if he could somehow find a way to at least nail the lineage of draft picks that Jacksonville has, then Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars could potentially be even more successful in the, not just the AFC South, but maybe in the AFC this ball.